Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Are you guys there? Good afternoon. Hey, how good are afternoon. you, Sapphire? How are you, Kadir? Okay, I see. Uh, I see only five people here, and um, uh, only two out of five replied. Uh, what happened to the rest of the? Uh, what happened to the rest? Uh, nobody's, uh, nobody's, you know, greeting back. Only two people. Uh, well, anyway, um, uh, let me take a look at the. Uh, oh, my eyes are. My eyes are really. Uh, all right, I see also uh, five people here. Uh, so that's a very honest number, <laughs> five here in the, and the five in the uh, uh, Collaborate. Now, so let me just check where we were last time. I'm sure, you know, we, we had just one hour session last time, which was, you know, on Monday, April 11th. And the last thing we talked about was, uh, hey, good afternoon, everyone. So let's see. Oh, no, 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 something's not, uh, I, I must have pressed something twice. So let me do this again. Oh, so tips, I believe. Since yesterday, 25, the buyer is willing to pay. Oh, oh, that's 25 over 30. The whole thing, uh, I'm going to talk about blue. This one is different from the uh, growth. Uh, okay, we, uh, okay. Uh, uh, please, you know, uh, bond quotes, right? How, uh, bond quotation. Now, um, so let me also open up. Okay. So uh, we know how the uh, bonds are quoted, right? And um, uh, on the print media or in the print media. And um, one interesting th thing that you noticed, uh, I mean, it's, it's not really, you know, that uh, startling. Uh, but the fact that, you know, we always have a very low uh, coupon rate on the treasury because treasury is, um, because treasury is uh, the safest asset and the safest asset doesn't have to pay a high uh, interest, right? Uh, and coupon rate on the uh, a corporate bond, uh, like the CIT group, Right, that is, you know, uh, quite decent. You know, seven percent. Of course, these days you won't be able to find uh, in the queue. Uh, uh, in corporate bonds, you may find, but you know, uh, if CIT Group was, you know, uh, triple B class at the time, uh, these days. Uh, the triple B bond would be paying lower rate than, you know, before, because all of the interest rate has gone down since, and this example was taken in 2010, I told you, uh, I could trace it back to 2010. So if that's the case, then, mm, uh, yeah, triple B would still be paying about 7% these days because interest rate uh, hasn't, changed a lot since then, although Federal Reserve has raised the interest rate by a quarter percentage point since the last, you know, uh, uh, FOMC meeting, which was in March. Uh, so it's just about a quarter, quarter percentage point, so it's not a big deal. It would still be about triple B would be paying. And uh, uh, municipal bond is paying something in between. But think about it. We, uh, even now, even the current uh, 
even the current, you know, uh, uh, and I told you this is 10 year, originally 10 year treasury note, 10 year treasury note. So uh, even now it is paying about 2.7%. Uh, I looked it up a couple of days ago and uh, I wish this is the re uh, reality, but this is not today. <laughs> today, all the indexes have gone down. Uh, this is crazy. Um, European, uh, Asian market and European market are okay. Uh, they are good. Uh, in the U.S., uh, I just, so this is 10-year, uh, uh, oh, no, no, this is 30-year treasury bond, and this is, you know, uh, 10-year uh, treasury note, right? 10-year treasury note. Uh, five years, right? Uh, and this is weekly. Uh, uh, this is this is ten year treasury note, and this is now what. Uh, 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 S&P 500, and this is, you know, Dow Jones. But what this is showing you is, you know, based on uh, like five years ago, right? Uh, based on that, using that as zero, right? Uh, this is show, showing just not the uh, uh, current uh, yield, but uh, not the uh, current level of, you know, uh, yield. Uh, but, you know, percentage change. So from zero, um, uh, so the base, base year was, you know, uh, base was, you know, uh, April uh, 16th, 2017, but it's weekly, a weekly. Uh, so as of Friday that week, uh, as of the end of the trading that week, uh, uh, currently, it is like slightly. Uh, today it is somewhere here, but you know, uh, uh, most recent week was like. Uh, okay, so today it is about you know. Uh, 25 uh, 25% higher than when it began but you know uh, uh, the level you can say you know uh, uh, this is actually I, I wonder if this is percentage uh, it must be percentage right otherwise you know uh, so it's slightly um, uh, higher than before. Uh, I mean, uh, higher than 2010, it goes without saying, because now, uh, uh, since March, right? Uh, March this year, uh, the benchmark rate has gone up at least by a qu quarter percentage point. But, you know, uh, the point is, uh, the Treasury being always if it is just like 2.75%, if the coupon rate is just about 2.75%, think about it. We all know what is the real interest rate. I mean, this is just nominal interest rate, nominal coupon rate, right? Nominal coupon rate. What would be the real interest rate? We all know real interest rate is inflation minus, uh, I mean, um, Nominal interest rate minus inflation. And yesterday, the inflation data came out. And the inflation data, was it yesterday or uh, uh, I believe, you know, Tuesday, uh, the 
the latest inflation is 8.5 percent so think about it even, uh, if coupon rate is even 2.8 percent that means we are already you know uh we are already you know uh um you know loss a uh, real rate is already negative right real uh interest rate is uh, already negative real coupon rate is already negative so but that's the nature of uh treasury treasury is the safest right uh the safest uh asset meaning u.s federal government is the safest borrower so they don't have to pay uh they don't have to pay high interest rate that's why it is the safest rate but then this is reducing this minimizes the appeal it lowers the appeal right it lowers the appeal of the treasury right uh, it lowers the appeal of the treasury right so that's that's the problem Everyone there? Uh, okay, I see more people here now. Uh, seven people. Uh, you guys follow? Hmm? You guys follow? Anyone there? Hello? Yes, you just put yeah. down the formula. Yeah, 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 good, Sapphire. Oh, only one person. Only one person. Where's the rest of the class? Ah. Uh, uh, I just wrote on it, but you know uh, that's not the, that, that's not the point. You know the point is you know uh, uh, treasury uh, coupon rate on the treasury always so low, it is unappealing, right? It lowers the appeal of the treasury because uh, most of the times it's lower than the uh, 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 inflation rate. Back in back in like 2010, inflation was still only around you know uh, uh, below two percent. It was only around you know inflation was you know only around like 1.5, at you know uh, at best just you know uh, flirting around two percent. So the real interest, the real interest rate was still positive, but in you know. Uh, uh, Normally, most other times, if inflation is something like this, right, 8.5%, which is the uh, latest uh, inflation data, you're always, you know, uh, um, you're always behind. So that's that's what uh, that's why they came up with tips, right? What's tips? It's Treasury inflation protected securities. I mean. This is more uh, in protection against inflation. Uh, this is quite, um, this is a compelling issue for the uh, treasury. So they came up with uh, uh, treasury inflation protected securities. Okay, so let me also open my Uh, all right. So how do you uh, make adjustment for inflation? Uh, it's a simple idea. 
if inflation is you know um, 10 percent you know let me let's see if uh, okay it's open now so um, now think about it the price uh, the face value of the bond right the face value of the bond is always 1k right but if the inflation is 10 percent the actual purchasing power of this 10k will be 10 percent less so you need to uh, make uh, you need to compensate for that 10 percent so what do you do you will increase face value by or par value by that inflation rate right so then the par value will be adjusted uh, to 1.1k okay you all know face value is also called par value also called maturity value right now once the par value is adjusted for inflation right then uh, even the coupon payment right uh, coupon is basically the par value uh, which is 1000 right uh, so let's say coupon is basically the face value times uh, coupon rate once face value has been adjusted right to 1.1k then if the coupon rate coupon rate is you know about five percent previously um, when the face value was 1k uh, the coupon payment should be $50 a year, right? When face value was 1K. But now it is 1.1K, uh, the coupon payment will be uh, $55 a year. So uh, both the face value and the coupon payment will be adjusted, right? Will be uh, adjusted for uh, inflation. And uh, you all know, uh, you should know, uh, this is annual, but bonds are always on semi-annual cycle. That means, you know, uh, uh, coupons are paid semi-annually. So you divide it by two. That's going to come to uh, 22.5, right? 22.50, uh, which will be, you know, uh, semi-annual. Every six months you'll get, okay? So that's how. And how do you, then the next question is, how do you find this inflation uh, rate? Uh, it's based on the uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index. So um, CPI, CPI is based on the base year. And the CPI Consumer price index of the base year is always 100. Okay, and the CPI of the uh, uh, given year or the year of interest uh, the year in question, right? Um, or given year. I mean, CPI is all, uh, published by Bureau of Labor Statistics. You can always, you know, look it up. And if uh, CPI of the given year is 200, what does that mean? Um, there has been 100%, right? There has been 100% increase uh, in the uh, price level, or that means 100% uh, inflation right everything is in a, a price has doubled right price level has doubled so uh, 
see, uh, in, in economics, CPI uh, base year, CPI of the base year has always been, uh, you know, in general, it has been uh, 1984. It's actually 82 through 84. They use this period, the CPI, uh, and that that's the base year. Okay, because you know, uh, uh, in the uh, recent history, uh, there was a huge, you know, uh, uh, stagflation, or you know, uh, inflation in the late 70s, and to correct that uh, uh, inflation, they uh, cooled off the economy. So uh, uh, they raised the interest rate in early 80s, so the economy really cooled off in the early 80s. So there was a, uh, uh, obviously it's artificially induced recession, right? When the economy is heated, overheated, you have to uh, uh, cool it off, you have to put it into, a, you have to cool it off. And that the only way you can do that, you learn this in topic one, tight monetary policy, right? Uh, you. Uh, tighten up money supply, and you cool off the economy, right? Uh, and so there was a, uh, I already talked about this huge, you know, recession in the uh, early 80s. Uh, this recession was, was, you know, inevitable, and it was artificially induced. Now, however, um, so around 1997, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, so, uh, but then think about it. Um, they, uh, but 1984, 1982 is already like, you know, uh, 40 years ago. That was, you know, uh, such a long time ago. Um, more than a generation. Uh, one generation and a decade ago. So uh, they need, uh, we need a more recent benchmark point. And the more, uh, most recent base point is, you know, base year is 1997. Okay, 1997. So that means uh, 1997 is base year, right? Based on 1997, uh, 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 CPI, uh, and so CPI of 1997 is 200. And about 10 years later, 2007, uh, the CPI was about 200. It was actually about 201. Okay, so that also means, you know, uh, there was about 100% uh, uh, inflation over 10 years. And that was, you know, um, uh, And so you can understand, you know, uh, basically how we find, you know, inflation uh, uh, by looking at CPI. Uh, you know, uh, the price level has doubled, you know, between 2009, uh, uh, 2007 and 1997, just over 10-year period. So here, uh, here comes our example. Our, our example exactly, you know, uh, comes into that uh, type of uh, reasoning. Just not a difficult thing. Uh, so let's take a uh, uh, example. Uh, consider a ten-year tips issued in January of 2017. Okay, paying two and three eighth percent coupon, and now you know um, this is you know uh, the weird. Uh, uh, treasury system, 32nd system, right? Something over 32, right? 
So if it is three eighth, uh, uh, eight, uh, that's like you know, um, four, uh, four times eight, thirty-two, uh, three times four, twelve. So that's twelve over thirty-two uh, of one percent. So the exact coupon rate, um, exact coupon rate is. Uh, Two and three eighth percent is zero point zero two three seven five. So two point three seven five percent. Okay, I showed you how to uh, convert that uh, last time. Right? It's basically you know um, um, Okay, I will have to use, you know, two plus, oh, yeah, 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 two, ah, no, 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 okay. open parenthesis, two plus three over eight, close parenthesis, divided by 100, that's, you know, that, because it's percentage, right? You divide it by 100, then it becomes, you know, it turns into a, um, right, decimals, right? Um, so that's the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the percentage. Uh, paying coupon rate of 2.375%. The CPI at the time, um, CPI at the time in uh, January of 2007 was 201.66, right? Now, three years later, January of 2010, CPI was 216.246. Uh, so this is roughly about 16 point CPI increased roughly about 16 uh, points, right? Now, it's 15 something, right? But you know, roughly 16. But think about it. Uh, 16 uh, with the base of 200. I mean, from 200, it uh, went up by uh, 16. So uh, in percentage, it's just about 8%, right? And that's the, uh, uh, so uh, to find exact figure, right? Uh, We'll have to multiply the par value, original par value, by CPI of 2010 divided by CPI of uh, 2007. That would give you, think about it. So here, CPI. 2010, three years later, right? It was about 216, something, something. This was, you know, uh, two, uh, 201 something, something. So it's roughly about, you know, uh, 15 points. And then, uh, so basically the growth Inflation rate is the growth rate in CPI, right? If you think about it, inflation rate is the uh, uh, growth rate in CPI. So uh, basically, you know, uh, if you want the net net growth rate, um, there are two things you can do: CPI to 2010 minus CPI 207 over CPI eh, two oh seven, right? And this will give you net, right? Uh, or uh, net uh, 
inflation, it will give you something like seven point something percent, right? Because it's 15 divided by 201, right? This difference will be like, you know, 15. And then 201, it's going to come to something like seven point something, right? Or another way you can do this is, you know, um, if you want the net, net growth rate or net inflation, uh, you can simply divide CPI of 2010 by CPI of 2007. But then think about it. This is the gross, then you will get a gross growth rate. In other words, uh, what you get here is actually, you know, uh, one plus pi, one plus inflation, right? So gross growth rate. So, but if you subtract one from here, you do the same here. So then it will be, you know, net inflation. Right, but we don't need net inflation. We need uh, it's fine. Gross, gross inflation is what we need. Why? Because anyway, to adjust our par value, to adjust our maturity value for inflation, right? Then we need anyway, um, we need to multiply uh, that 1,000, 1K by one plus pi. So uh, think about it. That's what has, that's what is, that's what they, that is, that's what, is happening here. You divide CPI uh, 2010, this is CPI of 2010, by CPI 2007, and we'll come to something like, uh, we'll come to something like 1.072 something, 1.07231, right? And then you multiply it by 1000, then, and of course, you then that's why how you got this. So once this is the uh, face value, right? You multiply the uh, adjusted par value, right? Adjusted par value. You multiply by the coupon rate. You multiply that by coupon rate. Uh, it will come to 25 something, obviously. But you know, uh, it's semi-annual, right? Uh, 25 something is annual. Uh, so to find semi-annual, you divide it by two. Then you come to uh, uh, a semi-annual coupon of 12.73. Okay, so this is basically the logic behind it, right? Uh, this is the mechanism behind it. And it's important to understand the mechanism, right? Um, so I see, uh, I see nine people. Uh, good, let me see. Uh, uh, All right, 11 actually, 11 uh, on, on the uh, today's forum. And so two people are missing, okay? Two people are missing. Uh, so everyone is okay with the uh, concept of tips? Everyone is, any questions? Any questions? Nobody's saying anything. Are you guys there? Anyone there? Brel Braylon, Braylon, are you there, Braylon? I'm here. Uh, okay, Braylon. Uh, Mukhtar, you are there. Okay, Lorraine. Okay. Uh, all right, I got you. Nikari, Nikari, are you there? Nikari? I think Nikari is gone. Preeta, 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 or Preeta? Preeta, are you there? No. Kadir, are you there? Kadir? Where are these people? Huh? They, they they are playing hooky. Okay, Nickery, Okay, you're there. Uh, 
Kadir is not here. Ronisha, Ronisha, are you there, Ronisha? Ronisha. Uh, Shadrach, okay, I didn't call out your name, but you, okay, uh, preemptive, okay. I'm that's, here, Professor. Okay, Ronisha. Sapphire, are you there, Sapphire? Sapphire. Yes. Okay. Sir. All right. So, any questions? Any questions so far? All right. I'll take it as no. So next, uh, Muni Muni Bond. Okay, Muni Bond. You all know Muni Bond has you know different face value, right? Muni Bond has a face value of five k. Okay. Now, this is a downside of the muni bond. Why? Um, large, large face value makes it difficult, uh, makes it less marketable. Why? Because suppose you have only $5,000. If you have only $5,000, you can buy only one bond, one muni bond, while with $5,000, you can buy like a uh, about five uh, treasury or corporate bond, right? Five of, uh, and once again, the price, selling price is not five, uh, selling price is not 1,000 or 5,000. Selling price will be slightly below or above, right? Slightly below or above the um, par value. You all understand why, because, you know, uh, par value is what you get. It's redemption value. When you redeem, uh, when you redeem the bond or when you, you know, redeem your money. Um, so generally, individual investors uh, generally uh, don't hold muni bonds. Uh, think about it. Uh, so... If you have only five thousand dollars, you can you can buy only one muni bond, right? Whereas you can buy about five treasury or corporate bond. And if you bought corporate bond, if you, you're holding five of them, and that means if you need two thousand dollars urgently, if you need two thousand dollars urgently, you can just cash out two and still leave three in the bond. Right, and those three bonds will still continue continue to earn whatever the uh, coupon rate is. I mean, if it is, you know, um, if it was the CIT group, uh, it, those three bonds will still continue to earn seven percent a year. Right, but that option is non-existent. That option is uh, there is no such option with the uh, muni bond because. Uh, you have only one bond, and there is no way you can conveniently cash out only two thousand out of it and still keep three thousand in it, right? So that's one downside from individual investors' perspective. In other words, the marketability and the liquidity is low. The marketability and the liquidity of muni bond. Uh, is low, right? Of course, you know, uh, uh, you can sell. I mean, uh, as far as the liquidity is concerned, I cannot say the liquidity is low because you can sell. You can sell easily. But partial liquidity, in other words, conveniently, the ability to conveniently just cash out or liquidate partially, right? That is... Uh, absent, completely absent in muni bond. Okay, so the muni bond is held mostly by the institutional investors. Uh, because institutional investors such as, you know, uh, 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 insurance companies, insurance companies, and pension funds, uh, they need something like this. Why? Muni bonds are safe. Not all the muni bonds are safe, but you know, uh, 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 muni bonds of uh, uh, a large cities like New York City, uh, muni bond is quite safe. 
I mean, uh, uh, and it's long term. So pension funds uh, and invest uh, insurance companies need uh, to um, need to invest in the assets that will generate steady income in the long run. Okay, over the long term, they need something like that. What um, then? You know, of course, they have two choices. You know, uh, uh, corporate bond, uh, 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 um, treasury bond, which is very safe, riskless, or muni bond, which is relatively you know uh, safe. If it is New York City, something like New York City, uh, not all the uh, municipalities are safe. Uh, California state government went bankrupt in early 2000s. Uh, city of Bridgeport in Connecticut went bankrupt in early 1990s. So the municipalities can go bankrupt. Uh, so they all have different credit ratings. Uh, if it is uh, New York City, and if it is triple A bond, triple A corporate bond, good. But then, you know, uh, uh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't use treasury because treasury coupon is very low. Coupon rate is very low. Although there is you no know, uh, tips, if it is tips, you know, uh, they would. Uh, a triple A corporate bonds, uh, safe corporate bonds, uh, long term corporate bonds would be good. Uh, but triple A would pay very low uh, interest. Maybe single A would be good. Muni bond is a choice. Uh, this is the preferred choice. Why? Uh, it pays, you know, relatively uh, decent coupon. But another benefit of muni bond is that it's tax. The interest income from the muni bond is tax exempt. Okay, it's tax exempt. So therefore, here's an example. Uh, investor, investor in 35% marginal income tax bracket. Now, what does this mean? We did we talked about this in uh, topic one. Marginal tax rate means uh, any additional income you earn, any additional dollar you earn, you, it's still taxed at 35% rate. It doesn't go up to the next rate. Okay, so if you have hundred thousand dollars, so um, to invest either in corporate bond or muni bond, uh, if you buy corporate bond, you will be subject to thirty uh, percent tax rate. And corporate bond pays 7% coupon, right? Corporate bond coupon. So it's $100,000. If you put $100,000, it's 7% of $100,000, right? 7%. So of course, $7,000, right? Your interest income will be $7,000, but that's going to be taxable. So let's adjust it for taxes. So tax rate is 35%. So whatever is left is, you know, um, uh, one minus 0.35. So 65% of this 7,000 is what's left after taxes, which is, you know, uh, 4,550. Muni bond pays, you know, 5% coupon rate. Five percent coupon on muni bond. So uh, you might think, you know, without thinking, you might jump into conclusion. Uh, or from the corporate bond is seven percent muni bond, five percent corporate bond is better. No. You already have calculated after tax income from the muni uh, corporate bond is four thousand five fifty. Uh, the interest from muni bond is tax exempt, so it's five thousand. Muni bond wins, okay? Muni bond wins. So you have to make this uh, distinction. On the other hand, uh, if your marginal, uh, not too many people 
fall into 35% marginal tax bracket. I mean, unless you make like, you know, unless your annual income is uh, above uh, $200,000, you hardly fall into a 35% uh, marginal tax bracket. You would most likely fall into a 28% marginal tax bracket. So if you are in 28%, Uh, if you are in lower marginal tax bracket, 20, uh, then uh, uh, equivalent taxable yield is six point. In other words, you know, uh, uh, one minus tax rate, whatever is left is 0 0.62, 62%, I mean, 72%, right? 72%. So 72% of 7,000, 72% of 7,000, uh, uh, you will end up with, uh, you will end up with much, you know, a uh, better, uh, you know, uh, after tax income from uh, a muni uh, uh, the corporate bond. So, uh, uh, here's an. Uh, this is the uh, uh, the uh, reverse reverse formula. In other words, uh, how did we get to uh, what time was it? Oh. How did we get to uh, after tax after-tax interest income, uh, we multiply the interest from the corporate bond by one minus tax rate, right? Then, um, and this is a you know, pre-tax interest, right? Pre-tax. So if you are solving it for uh, pre uh, this time, this was the unknown, but what if this is the unknown? What if this is the unknown, right? In other words, uh, so if you are comparing, if you are comparing uh, now uh, uh, the muni bond tax yield, uh, muni bond yield with the corporate bond yield. In other words, if you are converting muni bond uh, uh, interest income, uh, so if you are solving it for pre-tax interest income. What do you need to do? You will have to uh, uh, divide after tax interest by one minus tax rate. Okay, so um, it's just the reverse reverse engineering. And um, here um, these are all dollar values, right? Because we are talking about the uh, dollar income. These are all uh, dollar values, right? But if we switch to a uh, yield, in other words, uh, percentage, this is what? Uh, uh, taxable, right? Uh, corporate uh, Uh, this is an uh, taxable corporate equivalent yield. In other words, oh, that's too long, so uh, I will just write it like taxable. Corporate ah. corporate equivalent uh, 
percent yield, right? Which is percentage. Then uh, this is muni yield, which is a percentage, right? Minus tax rate. Now that is exactly what this is. Okay. All right. That's how you uh, convert. Uh, muni yield to uh, taxable yield or taxable yield to uh, uh, muni yield, right? Vice versa. So um, uh, that's and uh, uh, we'll, we'll need to take a break. It's 2.56 so we'll take a 10 minute break and recommend at uh, 3.06. Okay? All righty. Uh...
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, so uh, it took a little longer than I thought. Uh, I had to take a, uh, I, I had to take care of a couple of you know uh, things before uh, uh, we reconvene. Um, so um, uh, so that's that's just as much as we. Uh, can talk about um, just you know about the institutional uh, aspect of the bond. So now we move on to a, a bond valuation, and because this topic, this chapter, this topic is really about valuation because we have done already a lot about the institutional side of the bond. So first, now we know um, uh, bonds can be either zero coupon or coupon bond. Um, and first, you know, uh, zero coupon bond, valuation of zero coupon bond is straightforward, very easy. Uh, first of all, uh, all the bonds have par value of, you know, uh, 1000, that goes without saying, uh, maturing in 20 years, that's, you know, uh, our uh, timeline, right? Uh, maturity up to 20 years and price to yield 6%. Now, this is an interesting thing, you know, um, this this means, you know, this is the discount rate, right? This is the, this 6% is the discount rate. But in the bond problems, they never, this is not the wording, they never use such a wording. The wording is never straightforward, like use this as the discount rate. Okay, uh, the wording is generally, um, uh, it's, uh, there are three types of wording. One, uh, first, uh, like this, the bond is priced to yield 6%. Right, or uh, price to yield, or s the bond sells to yield. Right, bond sells to yield X percent. Second type of wording is a comparable bonds or similar Comparable bonds or similar bonds pay or yield 6x percent. Okay. The third way it is worded third way is uh, the prevailing market rate. The prevailing market rate is uh, X percent. That's the way uh, it is worded. They never say straightforward, this is the discount rate. Okay? Um, so you have to uh, keep that in mind uh, when when the, uh, the problem is worded this way, that means that's the uh, discount rate. Now then, uh, it already gave you the answer. Uh, uh, the price of that bond, such a bond, is 306 today. So how did they get to that uh, conclusion? It's simple. Uh, in, in case of zero coupon bond, it's just like scenario one, just like the scenario one in a uh, house value example. Why? Because uh, it's the question of, uh, now that means 20 years later, 20 years later, right, um, you will get 1K, right? The future value is 1K, in other words. Future value is 1K. And future value is face value in case of bond. Uh, uh, what should be the principle? It's the question of what should be the principle, right? And of course, N here, uh, okay, let's do it this way. I'll call this T because it's, ah. 
And our question. Uh, and it is APR, right? So um, that means you know, uh, uh, APR is 6%. Time to maturity is 20 years. But bond is, you should understand that the bond is always on semi-annual cycle, right? Uh, or even the uh, zero coupon bond. You, you may wonder, I mean, wouldn't it matter if it is a uh, coupon bond? Uh, it would matter if it is a coupon bond, but would it still matter if it is a zero coupon? Even if it is a zero coupon bond, uh, so it's not paying any interest, still, uh, the bond is on a uh, semi-annual cycle, which is, you know, that means M is two. And we all know then, oh, then uh, R would have to be periodic rate. The periodic rate must be 3%. And then N should be 40, right? 40 semesters. So this is a question of solving for what is the, uh, uh, present value, right? What's the present value? What is, you know, the solving for the present value, right? So it's very straightforward, right? And we know this is 1K, you know, this is 40, you know, this is, you know, uh, uh, 0.03, right? 3%. And, you know, uh, uh, we can, we can find the pr uh, present value of this. So this present value uh, is the price of uh, uh, the current price of the bond. Okay, it's the current price of the bond. So not a difficult thing, okay? You see why, now you understand why, you know, uh, N is 40, why it is, you know, uh, discount rate is 3%. So um, that's easy, that's quite straightforward in case of zero coupon bond, but if it is a, um, Coupon bond, uh, coupon bond pays you know, uh, uh, coupon interest for the life of the bond. So a bond has 10 years to maturity, right? Par value of 1,000, of course, coupon rate of uh, 10%. So uh, at the end of every year, it's going to pay, you know, $100. Uh, at the end of every year. So this is what? This is exactly um, this pattern. Uh, I ask always, you know, uh, the students, what is this pattern? I mean, what is this cash cash flow pattern called? What is this called? Uh, anyone? What is this type of, you know, cash flow? Regular amount at regular interval. $100 regular amount at the end of each year, regular interval, right? Does anyone, nobody's answering. I'll just have to mark everyone absent, I guess. Huh? It's almost like you are all absent here. Um, Mukhtar, are you there Mukhtar? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Mukhtar. So Mukhtar, what is this type of uh, cash flow pattern? What is that called? No, you don't know? What about anybody else? Anybody has any idea? Sapphire, Sapphire. Are you there, Sapphire? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Sapphire. So what is this type of cash flow? 
cold. Hmm? It's regular, regular amount at regular interval. What is this called? We just did um, in the last. Hmm? Hmm? Say that again. Is it the future value? No, no, no. The cash flow is in the future, but is it's it not the future answer? value. Mm -hmm. Say it. Say that again. Is it, uh, is it, is it incidental income? I can't. I can't barely hear you. Can you speak up? Look. This there this pattern right regular amount at regular interval, that's called annuity. Isn't it right? That's called annuity. You've forgotten already, huh? So think about it. In the uh, uh, coupon bond. The cash flow pattern is exactly annuity, right? There are 10 payments of $100, and at the end of our timeline, at the end of our uh, timeline, you have $1,000, which is not. And then, of course, the last, last coupon payment of $100, right? But think about it. These $100 are annuities, and what we want to know is, what is it? What is the price of this bond at time zero? Right? In other words, the bond price is the bond price at time zero. That's what we are, uh, you know, that's what we want to know. Right? Now, the bond price now, the price now, and the bond price is the, uh, the result of present value of all those annuities and the present value of single cash flow, which is the maturity value, right? $1,000. So nobody can answer this, huh? Nobody, I mean, this is something you already know and you would, I think I should give you all minus five points huh? for everyone. Um, not minus 0 0.5, but you know, five. Huh? So um, this gives you, you know, uh, now that, you know, tells pretty much, you know, um, uh, you know, the next slide is already showing. This is, you know, uh, this $100 it's an annuity and $1,000 is single sum. So uh, mathematically, uh, I use B, uppercase B for uh, intrinsic value of the bond, intrinsic or rational price. or fair value of the bond. And P subscript B, that's the market price of the bond, market price. So market price, yeah, I'm gonna get to that later. Um, so the price of the bond is basically uh, consists of two parts. One is the present value of all the coupons. And the other one is the present value of the face value. And the, uh, uh, the formula for uh, present value of annuities is this, right? Um, and the reason, um, and this should give you the rational price. The rational price is uh, this. Um, rational price can be, or intrinsic value or rational price, can, devi uh, can be different from the market price because market price can deviate from from the uh, correct uh, price market because in the in short run in the short run market is always you know uh, uh, crazy 
irrational. Market is most of the times irrational in the short run. That's why there's so much volatility, so much volatility in the market. Now, uh, think about it. Um, in, if it is stock, there is so much volatility and uh, market price of the stock can deviate a lot from the uh, uh, intrinsic value of the stock. However, uh, in case of bond, that, that uh, deviation is very minimal. Why? Because there is no unknown variable to cash flow, right? In, in case of bond, the cash flow is obvious. Cash flow from this coupon bond is obvious. Uh, there is no there is no noise or there is no uh, ad hoc factor or unexpected factor because if the bond has 10% coupon rate, then it will pay $100, 10% of the face value, $1,000 face value uh, every year. And if the uh, maturity left, time to maturity left is, time left to maturity is 10 years, it's gonna be $100 at the end of every year. There's no other unknown or erratic variable that can enter this formula, that can enter this equation. So um, even if the market price may slightly deviate, uh, that difference won't be that much, okay? So using this formula, right, we calculate, okay, uh, okay, uh, that uh, in this in this example, right? What you need to do is okay. So it's um, again. Don't forget. Um, annually is annually ten percent, but in reality, it is uh, uh, bonds are always on semi-annual, right? Cycle semi-annual cycle. So coupon payment will be fifty dollars. Right, discount rate will be five percent. Uh, uh, no discount rate was given here, so that's going to be diff But if the discount rate is given, right, and the time uh, n will be twenty in this example. So let's do a similar example here. Uh, consider a twenty-year bond. Right, time to maturity twenty years, with seven percent coupon. The seven percent is uh, coupon interest rate. The discount rate is six percent annually. Six percent annually. Now I've been telling you this is not the way it is worded. This is not the way it is worded. They don't say straightforward. Uh, discount rate is six percent. Uh, how it is worded? It's usually worded. Uh, uh, the bond is priced to yield 6%. Bond sells to yield 6%. Bond is selling to yield 6%. Or comparable bonds, similar bonds pay 6%. And comparable bonds, similar bond means that are bonds of the same risk class. Like, you know, triple B bond, right? If this is a triple B bond, all the other triple B bonds pay on average 6%. That's what it is. Okay? Or otherwise, you know, another way of saying that is prevailing market rate is 6%. That's how it is worded. Okay. So the timeline will appear as, you know, uh, like this. Uh, because it's every semester, right? There are 40 semesters in 20 years, right? And the coupon rate... Uh, uh, because coupon rate is 7%, uh, $70 a year, right? Coupon payment, annual coupon payment, will be $70, 1K times 
seven. That will be seventy dollars. But the bond is on semi-annual cycle. I've been telling you. So the coupon will be you divide it by two. Each coupon will be uh, you divide this by two. Thirty-five. Right. And the discount rate is 6% a year, so half year rate, uh, 3%. So if you plug it into, and of course, face value 1,000, uh, 1K. Okay, uh, plug it into the formula. And you might, uh, this is just another version of formula. Uh, but this is, you know, um, uh, think about it. Simply, it's the same formula, but this, this one looks more complicated because it's triple decker. Nobody likes, you know, I mean, uh, triple decker is very cumbersome. So uh, use this, okay, follow this. Don't follow this, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, but think about it, this is payment, right? Coupon payment uh, over, uh, you multiply it uh, to one over R, right? One over R, one over R, right? And then 35 times, right? So coupon one over one plus R raised to N. And when you divide Like you know, a fraction by you know uh, something. It's this you know. Um, it's basically a over b times c here in the bottom, right? In the denominator, isn't that right? So uh, this is just another version of it. And then uh, if you do this, the result of the uh, annuities is this: eight oh nine. And the present value of that 1,000 is only this. So in other words, uh, think about it. It's 20 years, $1,000 to receive 20 years later means it doesn't mean that much today. It only, the present value of that is it's only about three, 306, right? It's rather most of the, uh, uh, the value of this bond is derived from the coupon because there are hundred a seventy dollar coupon a year, and that's going to be uh, for twenty years. So most of the uh, value of the uh, bond is derived from the coupon payment. The longer the longer the maturity, and the higher the coupon rate, right? Most of the most of its value is derived from the coupon. Uh, in other words, interest. And also another thing here, uh, this is a, uh, uh, so this is 1,115. So is this a uh, premium bond or discount bond? Anyone? Is this a premium bond or discount bond? Discount bond. Say that again. Discount? I said discount bond. Yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, it's not a discount bond. What's the definition of discount bond? What's the definition of discount bond? Hmm? A bond, this is a premium bond. Why? A bond that sells above par value. What is par value? 1,000 is premium bond. If it sells below par value, it's discount bond. But the price is above par value, so it's premium bond, right? And I talked about this at length in the previous classes and also in topic one. 
what makes the bond a premium bond or discount bond? Huh? In other words, what causes, the, what is the cause? And when I ask this question, some students are saying, if it is greater than par value, that's premium bond. No, that's not what causes it to become a premium bond. Huh? You're just, that's just repeating the same thing. It's just repeating, you know, uh, uh, what the, uh, the definition of the premium bond or discount bond. What's more important is, what is the cause? Right? That produces that effect. And in topic one, I talked about it's all about the relationship between, well, let me erase this. I told you, it's all about the, it's all about the relationship between the uh, uh, coupon rate and uh, the discount rate. If the coupon rate is greater than the discount rate, uh, it becomes a, a, a premium bond. If the coupon rate is less than the uh, um, uh, discount rate, it becomes a uh, 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 discount bond. Okay, and why? Why? Uh, and we are running out of time, so you go back and find out. Uh, and here, coupon rate is 7%, discount rate is 6%. So from that, you already know this is going to be a premium bond. And yes, it was it turned out to be a premium bond, okay? I don't know if I introduced this, you know, uh, to you before. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is a, uh, uh, a very famous, you know, physicist, astrophysicist, and you may have seen him on uh, Nat Geo or Nova or... Uh, and this is the importance of logical reasoning. In other words, understanding what it is you are memorizing even if you have failed to memorize it, is by far a greater intellectual achievement than having memorized something without knowing why. You understand? In other words, why is it like this? Why is it like this? Why and how? Why and how? That's more important than what? Okay, why is this a premium bond? How is this a premium bond? How did this become a premium bond? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, uh, uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, so uh, the class this is finished, and this is so the next class we meet will be Monday, the Monday after the spring break. And please understand that the uh, uh, even during the spring break, the lecture, uh, the main lecture videos are assigned according to the schedule, per exactly per schedule. The uh, uh, lecture videos are assigned, so it is your responsibility to keep up with the uh, uh, our lecture. Okay, uh, our uh, original schedule because if you go to look go to uh, uh, now we are even we're done with this I mean you know uh, uh, this is and uh, tomorrow or you know um, okay this will open up topic six it will open up April 15th that's tomorrow so you should be caught up with and even during the spring break, so they are constantly uh, lecture, main lecture videos are constantly assigned. So please keep up with that. You must be caught up with everything, right? Uh, otherwise, you can't do the, uh, 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 not just that you can't do, uh, you can take, you know, uh, quiz two, which will follow uh, shortly after the spring break. Uh, uh, not only, you know, you can take that, 
uh, but also you cannot do well in this class. You know, it's, uh, you must be super diligent. That's the only way. All righty, so any questions? Any questions so far? Any questions? All right, if you uh, have- Sir, I have a question. Oh, who is this, Lorraine? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I will dismiss the class first. And uh, so, um, all right, see you guys. Have a great uh, spring break. Uh, have a studious. Have a studying spring break, okay? Have a studious spring break. All right. Uh, Thank you. Take care, Thank everyone. You. All right. Take care, everyone. I see you, Professor. Okie dokie.